Hello, and welcome to our virtual Catalyst presentation. Here, you will learn how we can efficiently use the foods you don't get to see in stores. This is You Can't Beat Renewable Energy, Utilizing Wasted Produce for Power. My name is Brittany. I'm Calista. My name is Brianna. My name is Gunnar. And I'm Michael Wazla. Next slide. So we are talking about food waste that's generated by farms, the lowest level of the supply chain. The reality for most farmers is that even a demotion of one grade from the top USDA grade fancy can lower the value of a crop by 40%. This means that farmers would lose money harvesting the crop. The decomposition of all this produce is a significant contributor of greenhouse gases. Next slide. The effects of creating a more efficient use for all of this cold produce would be far reaching. Currently, the increasing levels of greenhouse gases lead to harsher seasons, which cause lower yields of acceptable produce, only exacerbating the issue. Although there are services addressing this issue, such as ugly produce boxes, we thought we could apply a much more innovative solution. Next slide. One con current solution that has been implemented to help reduce some of the food waste coming from farm fields is the usage of subscription boxes for ugly produce. One specific company is called Misfit Market. This service is somewhat expensive as the smaller box is $22, which means that many households may not be able to afford it. This solution should have worked to decrease the amount of produce that is left in the field because it doesn't, didn't meet the visual requirements to be sold in stores by having more people purchase and consume these fruits and vegetables, but instead has functioned primarily to raise awareness for consumers. Many consumers may be unaware that the produce that is left in fields and that the products that they see in stores has certain visual requirements. Um, consumers may not also want to purchase ugly produce due to the common stigma against such fruit within the food market, as well as the concern of receiving produce through the mail. The small number of consumers, only about 200,000 people across each company that provides this resource of the product means that there's very little ugly produce being purchased. Other groups have been working to reduce overall production of these unwanted fruits and vegetables. One organization that is combating the loss of 30 to 40% of total worldwide food production is the Post Harvest Education Foundation. One way in which they address this issue is that they have learning programs, such as those meant to teach more efficient harvesting techniques for young professionals who work with small-scale farmers in developing countries. This organization does a lot of its work in developing countries. The graphic on the website shows all the areas in which they have been involved with helping small-scale farmers. This solution they have created is meant to help educate the small scale farmers in developing countries to better understand and not have as much food waste, but it doesn't focus on the bigger problem, the places like US and Canada where food waste is higher. Next slide, please. All right, so when it comes to the biggest food wasters around the world, this graphic shows different regions of the world and the amount of food wasted per person per year. North America contributes the highest amount of food wasted per person per year. This graphic also shows the most wasted type of food per region. For example, North America's type of food wasted is roots and tubers. Examples of roots and tubers are vegetables like potatoes, carrots, and beets. We have more data on exact numbers on the next few slides. Next slide, please. About 7% of all planted farm fields go unharvested each year due to the lack of demand for the produce or due to the unattractiveness of that produce. This means that out of the 2,029,200 farm fields in 2018, there was as many as 62 million acres that went unharvested. Increasing the amount of greenhouse gas emissions by 3.8 tons per one ton of wasted crop. This thus equals 601,400,000 tons of produce wasted. 
When these crops are left in the field, they rot and release different gases into the atmosphere, especially methane, which contributes to the growing amount of greenhouse gases. If all farm or if all food waste at the farm level were reduced, there would be a reduction in greenhouse gases, gas emissions by about 9%. In 2007, fruit and vegetable growers harvested about 390 million pounds of produce. In Georgia, and up to 8% or 31.2 million discarded at packing houses, Shufska then stated that the harvested food only accounted for about 50% of all the planted crops that year. Next slide, please. This graphic shows many of the plants we see most here in Wisconsin, especially corn. Corn tends to produce higher levels of gas emissions. As the graphic shows, canola, corn, and barley produce the highest amounts of gas emissions. This graphic also provides how often each of the biggest emitters are planted into the United States. Next slide, please. Our proposed solution is to utilize the produce left in farm fields and removed during the culling process as an alternative energy source. This new energy could then be used to power neighborhoods if large enough digesters are built. According to Shubska, the number of onions produced and wasted by farms and packing houses in 15 different counties could produce enough energy to power 15 large houses annually, if this method were to be used. By using this solution, both farmers and people around the United States would be impacted financially and have access to cleaner power. If digesters are built near packing houses where culling processes remove food, then both those agencies and farmers could receive payment for the food that enters the digester. People in these areas would have access to cheaper and cleaner energy, since it's reducing the need for coal and oil to power homes, which also contributes to our growing problem with greenhouse gases. We will show how, with the use of an anaerobic digester, we can turn produce into energy. digestion or AD and composting expertise. AD is the conversion of organic waste such as waste food into biogas and digestate, a technology used by AugaWorld for more than 10 years. But how does yesterday's spaghetti become tomorrow's renewable energy? Firstly, all packaging is removed and sent for use in energy generation in place of fossil fuels. This ability to de-package food waste creates a competitive advantage as it makes life easier for customers like retailers and local authorities. The organic material is then blended into a liquid and transferred to storage tanks. These liquids are in effect the raw ingredients for the AD recipe. A mix of the liquid is then sent to the digester, which is an oxygen-free environment, hence the term anaerobic. Shank's experience means they're able to optimize the blend, maximizing the amount of biogas produced. The liquid in the digester is heated to 30 to 35 degrees and mixed with paddles to avoid separation. During its 30 or so days in the digester, microbes digest the organic fraction within the liquid and release methane-rich biogas. This gas and the processed liquid, called digestate, are then extracted and sent for further treatment. The biogas gets used in a variety of different ways. It can be upgraded to vehicle fuel or injected directly back into the gas grid. But typically, Shanks combusts the biogas to generate renewable energy which is sold to the national grid. This energy attracts renewable obligation certificates, known as ROCs. The digestate is then treated to separate the solids from the liquid. The liquid is cleaned and discharged back to the sewer and the solid is recycled back to agricultural land as fertilizer. This reduces the need for expensive inorganic nitrogen and replaces phosphorus, which comes from a non-renewable source, so nothing goes to waste. Legislative and fiscal drivers mean that AD is an increasingly attractive sustainable solution for private companies or local authorities wishing to meet their environmental commitment whilst increasing recycling and reducing waste to landfill. This makes AD one of the fastest growing segments within the waste management industry and Shank's experience means that no one is better placed to exploit it.
The digesters shown in the video from Shanks are similar to those that we are proposing for our wasted produce. While they have also not been used at the level that we're proposing, they do create a stepping stone for engineering problems that, for the digesters we want to use. As the video mentioned, anaerobic digesters utilize the process of fermentation to break down organic matter within a controlled environment. This follows a similar process within the natural area, however, instead of the gases being released into the atmosphere, they'd be released into the chamber. This occurs since there are different types of bacteria inside the digester that break down the molecules from the waste product that is considered to be the input material. This process occurs in four key stages as shown on this diagram. Hydrolysis, acidogenesis, acetogenesis, and methanogenesis. Each of these stages works to break down different molecules within the matter to release gases. Each of the parts of the process helped with different ways releasing different parts, such as hydrolysis helping with the monosaccharides, amino acids, and fatty acids, all the way down to methane formation where we get the release of methane, which can be used to power homes. This diagram shows what a typical digester looks like. This specific one is the typical schematic for an anaerobic digester used to break down manure nowadays. The overall process results in a gaseous material as well as sludge, which is made up of solid material. The gas is captured within the digester cover and the sludge sinks to the bottom of the containment unit as was shown in the video. Once the process is completed, usually within about 20 to 30 days, as is shown in the video and by the Environmental Protection Agency, the produced gas and sludge are housed until they are transported to different locations where they can be used in a variety of ways. The digesters that we want to build would be similar. However, different types of bacteria would be used in order to break down food compared to manure. In general, through the digester process, you can feed different types of waste, whether it be food, water, or animal waste, and it can be broken down to produce gas for electricity and heat. The gases can also be used for fuel and become part of a gas grid. Currently, similar digesters are, to the ones we are proposing are used to break down cow manure to reduce the methane emissions from raising livestock on larger dairy farms. The gas can, as stated earlier, be used for electricity and other forms of energy, while the sludge can be used as fertilizer. By using the sludge as fertilizer, this can cut down on the need for purchasing other forms of fertilizer, which costs money for the farms, since those produced by wasted fruits and vegetables will be more allowable for use on similar plants, since they do not include the same chemicals as the waste that comes off of other places, such as wastewater treatment facilities. The energy itself can be used in many forms, as seen in this diagram, showing heat, electricity, fuel, and the gas grid, is, and also in the previous video from Shanks, especially if we work with governmental agencies. There is many reasons as to why our proposed as to why our proposed solution will be successful. First off, consumers and producers will be positively impacted financially. Farmers and packing houses will be able to receive payment for the food that enters the stream into the digesters. Farmers will also have access to clean fertilizer from the digesters to help with the growth of their crops. This fertilizer will be at no cost as it comes from their own crops that they put into the digester. Local communities around the digesters will be able to have access to cleaner and more cost-friendly energy to power their homes. By using the anaerobic digester, it will reduce the need for coal and oil as the digester will be creating a cleaner long-term alternative energy source. As a result, greenhouse gas emissions will also be reduced as there will be a reduced need for the use of the coal and oil. Methane and other greenhouse gas emissions will also decrease as the unharvested produce is no longer rotting in the field as, and is instead being broken down in the digesters. This will lead to cleaner air in the area surrounding the digester, which will positively impact the health of individuals in this area. Finally, our proposed solution can eventually help low-income households by offering an alternative energy source at a more cost-friendly price. Next slide, please. There are a few obstacles and limitations that might occur with our proposed solution. These include engineering difficulties, government regulations, and costs. There has never been an attempt to use an anaerobic digester on a scale as large as we are proposing, so there might be difficulties related to engineering of these digesters. Large digesters need to be designed semi-custom based on the location it will be used and the size of it. As a result, if we place many digesters across the United States, we will need each digester to be engineered slightly different based on geographical location and the necessary size. 
The digesters would also have to meet local, state, and federal regulatory and permit requirements for air, solid waste, and water that is both entering and exiting the digester. Specifically, in Wisconsin, the Department of Natural Resources administers all permits for anaerobic digesters. The Department of Natural Resources must, must approve all feedstock that enters the digester and a permit must be obtained. To ob obtain all necessary permits and make sure all regulations are followed could take anywhere between eight and 24 months. If digesters were placed in different areas across the country, different local and state regulations would need to be followed and different permits would need to be acquired, which could potentially take long periods of time. Again, anaerobic digesters have never used on a scale that we are proposing. We might run into limitations and obstacles regarding the cost and maintenance of these digesters. The startup cost of a mid-sized digester on a private farm can range from $400,000 to $5 million. As we are proposing building digesters that are larger, the startup cost could be higher. Operating costs per month on average are, is around $5,000. And if one of the digesters were to fail, it would be costly to fix. Positively, many capital costs of the digesters can be subsidized by grants or low cost loans through the government. Next slide, please. Thank you.